You must extinguish this fear of failure and embrace it. Wow! This one is like driving what Indonesian people living in Africa. Society is totally Why do they go to school? The universal power to touch yourself. My soul. internet friends are my real friends. The worst possible thing you can do in an accident. What is body language? What is home? Just listen. Check, check, check. Okay, it's on. Okay. My name is Isamim, and today I want to shed a little light on a family of instruments that I'm certain you're all familiar with. A xylophone is a musical instrument in the percussion family that consists of wooden bars struck by mallets. Xylophones made from wood, bamboo, glass, metal, or even plastic are classified as idiophones. An idiophone is any musical instrument that creates sound primarily by striking it and letting it vibrate. My story is about xylophone bridges and discoveries I've made so far while playing this instrument. It's about connecting the dots and seeing how far this instrument has traveled across the globe. Xylophones have created bridges between distant countries and connected people from all over the world. But sometimes we take xylophones for granted. They aren't just children's tinker toys. Xylophones play an important part in musical tradition in so many different cultures. Generally, people know what a xylophone is. They know the sound it makes, but they probably don't know where it came from geographically or historically. The beginning of my xylophone bridge started on a small island off the coast of Tanzania called Zanzibar. It was here where my mother taught me simple Shona songs. But before I continue my story any further, I want to tell you a little bit about marimba history. The marimba actually went a global route before arriving in Zanzibar. The marimba was first discovered in southern Mozambique in the Chopi tribe region. It was here where a man named Sukuru Joe took the marimba, Sukuru Jake, sorry, took the marimba from South Mozambique um, over the Chimani Mani Mountains to Zimbabwe. And um, th there's a small town called Bulawayo, and in this town there's a music college called Quantum Goma College. And this is where he taught and also transformed the marimba. So that's the bridge that was created there. Um, in Bulawayo, he changed the tuning from the traditional tuning made by ear to the Western diatonic the do re mi fa sol la ti do ti uh, And then he also changed the, the resonators from gourds to bamboo and then to plastic PVC. He then um, taught a really important man in marimba history and his name is Dumi Sani Maraire. That's my mom on the right. So Dumi, at the time Dumi was known for not only being a brilliant composer of Christian hymns but also his own music. Um, he was later discovered and sponsored by ethnomusicologist Dr. Robert Kaufman to travel and study in America at Evergreen State College. He brought with him the very first marimba from Africa to America. And my mother was part of the first batch of students that Dumi taught. These students also changed the marimba. They changed the tuning, they changed the frames, and they also doubled the size of the bass marimba. They made it huge. So the Pacific Northwest really became a center for Dumi Maraire to teach and perform Zimbabwe music. Uh, he later attained his um, PhD in ethnomusicology and returned back to Zimbabwe to teach. At this time, my mother moved from Hawaii, from, sorry, from America to a small island in Africa called Zanzibar. She made another bridge by creating a set of marimba here. And when I was in Zanzibar, she taught me simple Shona songs and that started my love for marimba. From Zanzibar in 2001, we went to Hawaii. And in Hawaii, I saw my mother perform for the first time. I saw her, and I remember this vividly, she came to my school and she started playing. And I saw her playing and I looked at my friends, I looked at my classmates, and they were like really interested at seeing her play. And I remember looking at her and just seeing her like just shred on the marimba, just do an awesome, awesome job. And I thought to myself, wow, she's really cool. So, I got really inspired from that. Um, so, from Hawaii in, 2000, in 2008, we moved to Bali, Indonesia, where we created another set of marimba. And in Indonesia, um, I really, my passion for marimba started. I got into my first band, Kijani Marimba Band, from Green School, and then later on to a more professional band called Tsuba Kalulu. It wasn't until I lived in Indonesia for quite some years that I realized that um, Bali, or if all of Indonesia, ha have a deeply rooted xylophone culture. Um, they have the gamelan orchestra, the rindik, which is right here, the gender, which is a metal xylophone, the jegog, it's huge, uh, kolingtan, and so many more xylophones. 
Recently, I went to Sulawesi with my band Super Kalulu to play at a festival. And at this festival, I saw the closest thing to marimba that I've ever seen. I saw the calling tongue of Sulawesi. And on this instrument, I could play Zimbabwean music, and it sounds the same, and I was blown away. Um, I've had this question for quite a while now. Um, I thought, why do Indonesian people, why are they so accepting of Zimbabwean music? And I found out that maybe it's because they relate to it. Many times I've played on the marimba and have people come over to me and say, wow, that really sounds like the calling town of Sulawesi or the, the Anklung of Java. And they really relate to it. But they have no idea what a xylophone is. So I created a little mini presentation to young kids in Indonesian about xylophones, about the marimba, about a little bit about African rhythm, a little bit about um, dance, and also the history and any questions that they had. And this is how it went. Saya dari Afrika dan saya bermain muzik <laughs> Saya akan menjelaskan sedikit tentang instrumen xylophone Ini adalah marimba Bisa semua bilang marimba? Kanan, kiri, kanan Bersama kanan, kiri, kanan Thank you for coming here. Yeah, thank you. 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 Um, Indonesian xylophones and everyone who plays Indonesian xylophones gets to learn how to play marimba. Um, so my whole life I'm playing these instruments, um, playing African music on these instruments that I thought came from Africa. Until I stumbled upon some information that was mind-blowing. Well, to me at least. I found out that there's hard evidence that this, these instruments did not come from Africa. I found out that they actually came from Indonesia. There is hard evidence that Indonesians settled in large river valleyways in Mozambique. What? Indonesian people living in Africa? Anyway, so after hearing this, I, I did more research and I read a paper by an ethnomusicologist named A.M. Jones. And he discovered that the old xylophones in Africa and the old xylophones in Indonesia had the same tuning and the same orchestral setup. So they sounded the same and they were set up the same. So after hearing this, um, I was really curious what Indonesian people had to say about this. 
So I interviewed um, a bunch of my friends, a bunch of musicians, local musicians, but they had no idea. I interviewed one man, his name was Frankie Radin, an ethnomusicologist from Indonesia, and this is what he had to say. The xylophone in Africa originated from Indonesia. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. They traveled there in the 16th century. Actually, the origin is from South uh, Sulawesi. The, hmm. the Bugis, you know, brought yeah, uh, yeah. The, uh, the, the xylophone all the way to South Africa and they, wow. they, 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 uh, they, they create a community. So there is, a, in South Africa, there is, a, I think it's big enough, like, you know, uh, it's called Bugis community there. Hmm. And the Kolintang, there is one ethnomusicologist, I forgot his name, he wrote a very convincing uh, article hmm. and uh, explaining the origin of Kolintang. I mean, the origin of uh, xylophone in, in Africa hmm. is from Indonesia. Wow. So that's the theory. Wow. Of course, uh, some people argue, you know, with his theory. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But at, at least, you know, as far as I understood, his article is the most convincing, convincing one. Wow. Yeah. People will see, you know, there is a there is an um, a xylophone ensemble from Africa, which actually theoretically maybe come from Indonesia. So this uh, exactly like you said, it's a full circle. Mm -hmm. But then we need to reintroduce this to them. I mean, we need to introduce your group to them, mm -hmm. so they know there's something, you know. Uh, going on from there, which can be, I mean, the origin can be traced from here, yeah. and now it's here again. The impact of the global, you know, mm -hmm. encounter. Mm -hmm. That's very important. Yeah. We are part of it, you yeah, know. We're actually sure. leading it, you yeah. know, in music field. They're leading, we're, we're bringing together from the other part of the, the globe, you know, mm -hmm. bringing together and, and, and re, in doing some in, pro, uh, creative encounter. Yeah. And we are basically like, you know, creating a whole new civilization yeah. for this, this new this millennium. Change. It's yeah. a thing, yeah. yeah. So that's what he had to say. And after hearing that, I was really, really like buzzing. I was like, wow, this is amazing. I love this. And um, after 400 years, these instruments traveled across the whole globe and went through so much transformation. Um, little did I know I'd be part of this bridge. And everyone at Green School is actually part of this bridge because Raise your hand if you know what a marimba is. <laughs> um, raise your hand if you learned something today about marimba. Okay. My name is Isami Rashid, and thank you for listening to my story.